All right, everyone, you guys know how it goes. It's Monday, and we're here to have a conversation about food and dining in Korea. I'm sure all of you are curious because last week we left you with a cliffhanger. We were talking about how we can bring Korean food to your homes, mm-hmm. especially during coronavirus. And I am here today with Chef Matthew Chung again. Hi, Matthew. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm so happy to have you back here. I'm always glad to be here. It is just mm-hmm. the best way to start my week. It cures those uh, Monday blues, as mm-hmm. we say. here to see your smiling face and last week we kind of had so much to cover that we were like you know what we're going to split this in half we'll cover the basics first and then we'll move on to level two this week splitting in half might even be optimistic but we will see (laughs) how much we can do today and we have a great comment here would you like to take a a listen or read off this from vroomi here well i'm not familiar with this word but vroomi says oh no another food talk (laughs) I think that's how that's pronounced. (laughs) Goodbye, diet. (laughs) That's probably that sound when your head hits the keyboard Mm -hmm. and you just smash it there. A couple like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. That's the sound. But yes, it is food talk. And last week, we kind of covered the basic essentials. What were those? So we're going to talk about the basic essentials that you need to cook Korean food abroad. Yeah, 기본 재료. Right. So we're going to be talking about the other things, the substitutions later on today. But what we talked about last week are those non-negotiables. Yes. The ones that you really need to have if you're going to make Korean food at home. 100%. Right. So what you need, what you absolutely need, what you cannot Uh, would substitute uh, for uh, first off are the changs. That's the changs. <laughs> denjang, gochujang, kanjang. <laughs> 맞아요. That's like the the basic ones. We had that. Uh, what was it? Soybean paste, mm-hmm. and we had that red pepper paste, mm-hmm. and then your soy sauces, mm-hmm. basically. Right. And there was a lot of different types. So if you're all interested in the basics here, make sure you check us out on p a p b a n g or iTunes podcast. We'll get you all caught up on that there. But there were two, three other ingredients that we needed as well. Right. So this next uh, it, this next ingredient is also essential. You 이번 재료도 필수예요. Mm. Mm-hmm. 참기름. 참기름. Sesame yes. oil. That's right. 참기름 is oh, it's that little bit of just a little sprinkle of that to really tie it all together. All right. If you've had Korean food and uh, was it you had that kind of like rich nutty flavor, mm. in there, that's where it's from. It's from 참기름. I love mm-hmm. it, you guys. And then these last two here, I had only known one of these, and that was mjeolchi. Mjeolchi, right? I love the mjeolchi. That is anchovies. We'd mm-hmm. say in English. Um, but what was the second one? Right. So you have mjeolchi, dried anchovies, and you have t a s h i m a which is a giant kelp. And when they're used together, they form. These are the unsung hero of mm. Korean cuisine because they're very. This broth is light, but has so much body to it. Yeah. It gives you so much flavor, and it's kind of the basis for everything. And it's the unsung hero of Korean cuisine. And you really can't make like, I'd say about half of the broths that we eat in Korea. And we eat lots of broths. Yeah, that's true. Without these two ingredients. Oh, yes, absolutely. So these are the ones when you go to your stores, make sure you search for the three changs. The the changs meet the changs. Mm -hmm. And then also that sesame oil, that giant kelp. And then the uh, anchovies, the dried anchovies. So those were the basics. But now we're leveling it up. Right. We're going into substitutions. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about... Techeje. Oh, right. yes. So you were talking about substitute ingredients, yes. right? So techeje is like to substitute or mm. in substitution of. Yes. And so we're, we're going to be talking about a couple of common things that if you don't have that exact Korean version of it, mm-hmm. that might be okay. So okay. the first one we're going to talk about is shikcho ah, or shikcho. vinegar. Oh, yeah. I can't stand the smell, but man, I love the taste. Oh, it's absolutely essential just because like, that acidity, that mm-hmm. brightness that uh, vinegar brings, it's so important. We use it for so many different things in yes. Korea. Lots of things are in Korea are tangy because of fermentation, mm-hmm. but lots of things are tangy in Korea because of vinegar. Yes, it is. It's one of those things where I, I can't think of many... Many dishes without it, you know. Right. There, it's a very limited palate. Then, if you don't have it, so sure. we have this shikcho. Uh, shikcho again is the vinegar, but there's it. It has a lot to do with like the sugar as well, sure. right? So the types of vinegar that we use in Korea, and every culture that has the ones that they use. Certain cultures, like uh, say Chinese uh, cuisine, for example, have a really wide range of vinegars that you mm-hmm. use. But the ones that we use here in Korea, you have things like hanmi shikcho, mm-hmm. brown rice vinegar, or sagwa shikcho. I've seen sagwa yeah. shikcho. 
Apple, the apple cider. Vinegar. Yeah, mm-hmm. the apple vinegar. We we often use that in the States. 미국에서 우리 apple cider vinegar 이라는 거 있는데 that one's pretty popular just right. to drink in your for your health. Yeah, it's even. supposed to be great for the digestion. Yeah. Uh, and it's a little bit different because uh, was it uh, um, apple cider vinegar t- tends to be a little bit stronger in the apple flavor mm-hmm. whereas Korean one tends to be a little bit lighter. Yeah. And that's the general kind of trend in Korean vinegars is that they're light And slightly sweet. Not mm-hmm. very sweet. Don't think like balsamic vinegar. Yeah, They're exactly. They're just slightly sweet. So if you have access to, say, something like plain white distilled vinegar, mm-hmm. then you can maybe just lighten it up with a little bit of water and just a touch of sugar, and you'll get pretty close. What else do we have? There, there's some more things that you need to sweeten, I'd sure. say. So, so this next one, it's a sweetener that we use in Korea. And mm-hmm. I know a couple episodes, about, we talked about this before. And it's something, if you read Korean recipes, you'll see it come up all the time, but you might not necessarily know what it is. Mm-hmm. And that's m u l y a t Yes, m u l y a t Oh, I, when I first saw this, I was like, m u l y a t m u l y a t 무슨 뜻이 I was mm-hmm. like, what, what, is, what is that? And then I tried Googling them because I was like, m u l that's water. And then I mm-hmm. Googled the other one and I'm like, oh, that's not a word that I should be <laughs> using. So I was very confused. But what is m u l y a t So m u l y a t it's... It's basically, it's like a really thick syrup. So it's usually corn syrup or some form of glucose. Mm-hmm. And it's sweet, but more importantly, it adds this kind of glossy sheen to yeah. whatever you're uh, cooking. And that's just because I don't want to get too deep into the kind of nerdy chemical nature of uh, <laughs> what this is. But basically, like for like, how sweet it is, it's very thick and glossy and rich. Yeah. Like if you think honey, mm. think even thicker than that. Would it be thicker than maple syrup too? Much thicker s- than maple syrup. Or like, oh, oh, what's that really thick one? Molasses. That, molasses. You're thinking molasses. Yes. It's simple. Similar to molasses. Okay. In the sense that, say you take some in like a measuring cup. Yeah. It's going to take like a full like two minutes to scrape out all of it out of your (laughs) measuring cup. So we're not quite at the texture of peanut butter. That's the spread. Mm -hmm. But you are definitely that thick, goopy molasses kind of... I just I don't, I, all I can think of is goopy and gooey sure. and oozy sort of and thing. And the reason why it's so important in Korean cuisine is, but especially in things like meat marinades, for example, that extra thickness and richness is what's going to give your meat that kind of glossy shine after yeah. it's been cooking on the grill for a while. It's like a good glaze mm-hmm. for like barbecue. Right. Like we was already barbecue bunny We have sure. a lot of barbecue sauces. I would say that those are often made with molasses right. usually, or those brown sugars. So mm-hmm. this is kind of playing the same. Part. Same idea. And like tteokbokki as well, you have that rich, thick mm. sauce to it. m u l y a t is what's going to give you that without having to cook it down forever and get it reduced. Yeah. m u l y a t is going to give you that right texture. Oh, for that. I love it. But mm. now this next one here, I feel like this is the one that's going to be Like just the the be all end all, the one that everyone is going to know about. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to leave our listeners hanging just for a second okay. because if they need to substitute for b u l l a t yeah, what would you do? So what I would do is I would make like a very thick, heavy sugar syrup. Yeah. So normally sugar syrup is like equal parts sugar and water. Yeah. You just bring it up to warm enough until it like all dissolves. Yeah. I would go maybe three parts sugar to one part water at that point. It's not going to give you the same kind of glossiness and sheen that mm-hmm. b u l l a t will give it, but it will get close. Closer. And, and the, the taste will be relatively similar. Right. It'll say? be relatively similar. I think in, you can kind of substitute a one to one by volume and okay. you'll get a similar amount of sweetness in your dish. All right. Everyone keep that. It's a three to one ratio mm-hmm. there with the water to the sugar mm-hmm. if you don't have that thick, goopy b u l l a t there. Sure. But now this next one, right. what is this? Okay. So back on track. It's p e c h u I love. Pechu. Pechu. Oh, pechu is so good. For everyone who doesn't know what pechu is, what is that? Pechu is Korean cabbage. Oh, not so the Western style of cabbage. Mm-mm. It's not round. It's long. It's a big, it's oblong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, I don't know. I, I always consider it kind of football shaped sort yes, of in yes, a way. Yes, like an American football <laughs> yeah. shape. Whereas the other global football is more yeah, of the it's more know, Western the... style. I think we just made things more complicated than we apologize. clarifying it. We apologize. It's oblong. It's <laughs> oblong. That's it. <laughs> But cabbage here in Korea is just, it, it, you can't simplify it just into one thing. I feel sure. like when we think of cabbage in the States, we kind of have one or two things in right, mind. Right. But here, there are so many different types of kimchi. Mm-hmm. And some of them have cabbage and some of them are not even cabbage right. related. And so that's what I think the easiest substitution for cabbage if you want to make kimchi is, is just not use cabbage. Mm. Just kind of delve into the whole repertoire of kimchis that aren't made with cabbage yeah. in Korea. You, they, I, I think I went to the kimchi museum a, a little while ago and I think they said like several hundred different types of kimchi made all throughout the peninsula. Yeah. So if you don't have access to Korean cabbage, mm-hmm. do anything else. Asian radish, for example. Yes. To make gakdugi. Oh, oh, I love gakdugi. 
Pierogi right. is so good. I always eat that with any sort of like meats or barbecues. Mm-hmm. I'll often do that. My favorite one is actually the um, oi kimchi. Right. I love cucumbers. oi kimchi. Mm-hmm. With, uh, oi is cucumbers. And so, oh, it's just, it's so delicious mm-hmm. there. And But if you do have cabbage, there are different types of kimchi you can make with the cabbage as well. Right. right. And so actually, it, w- one very similar thing to kimchi in the way it's made is actually sauerkraut. Mm-hmm. The way sauerkraut is made is essentially almost like a like, like a light kimchi making process. There are a couple of ingredients that aren't in there. Like there's no kind of seafood product in terms of aiding the fermentation. But yeah. so that's to say that you can pickle and ferment like a yangbechu, like a Western style cabbage. And you can get a right. similar kind of taste to right. it there. Well, actually, we have a message here from Kyla Arsenita. She says, "What does kimchi taste like? How would you describe kimchi taste? Kimchi 어떤 맛인가요?" That's like trying to describe what does the color yellow look like exactly yeah. it's it, it, it's it is spicy but it's not as spicy as it looks yeah, for it, something that's so bright red yeah there is heat there though and it depends on how much and and it depends on the style because i would say p e k kimchi and like would you say p e c h u kimchi they're both made with cabbage mm-hmm. but that p e k kimchi is got less of a spice and more of a vinegary taste sure, to it yeah. so i guess it, it depends on what kimchi you're eating mm. but i will say the thing that stays throughout is that fermented kind of taste right. it's that tang it's that tangy it. it's deep it's complex yeah. it's crunchy it's refreshing i guess it it it, 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 it is a type of pickle yes. if you if you want to get really technical about it it but is yeah it's so much more at the same time and i often joke it is the elixir of life because i feel like every person who eats kimchi on the regular looks like they haven't aged a day so yeah that is my belief kimchi that's that that's the mm-hmm. that's the key mm-hmm. right there now in uh, in jun says oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah I do love solongtang. Oh, that is good. And Sillili Syria says the same kimchi tastes different depending on ripeness, age, and fermentation. That's absolutely true. There are, there are even different names for different stages of the, of the kimchi making process. Mm-hmm. It, when kimchi is fresh before it's fermented, it becomes k o t j a r i And then when it, on the other side, when it's aged for a really long time, you get m u g u n j i Like a I've... really, really dank. Long fermented. There mm-hmm. it is, right there. Dank, long fermented, right? Mm-hmm. We've got it. That's how we're going to put it in the dictionary, mm-hmm. right there, the difference. Mm-hmm. But actually, just a random side note, but there is, and I want to say like a season here in Korea mm-hmm. where people will go and make kimchi for the entire year. We call it kimjang. Right. And kimjang is a huge thing. Have you actually done kimjang? Every year. Every mm-hmm. year. In fact, my wife is starting to get into my family's kimjang now. <gasps> Really? Yeah. So they, you know, they they began like uh, her like the first year that she did it with my family. Yeah. She got all the very basic tasks, the ones that you can't mess up, like yeah. pull the cabbage from the boxes. <laughs> And now she's starting to get more and more responsibilities. Oh, I'm curious if any of our listeners have done kimjang. 혹시 여러분 김장 해본 적 있으시나요? I'm I'm curious if you have done this. Let me know uh, by sending us a message here to our uh, shop 1013. Uh, we'd be curious to hear what you have to say. Now, Ray's floor plan says any provincial preference. I'm an expat from the U.S. living in Gwangju in Jeollado, and truly believe that our kimchi is the best. Sure. What's your thoughts on? That. Well, I'd say that everyone has a very strong, especially hometown bias. So mm-hmm. I would say that Ray's floor plan is absolutely wrong, but at the same time, <laughs> very right. But from where I'm coming from, absolutely wrong because I like my mom's kimchi and my mom's from Incheon. Mm, and okay. so when she makes her kimchi, she puts k a j a m i s h i k e n there, mm. which is a type of kind of half dried uh, uh, sole. Yeah. You know, like the S O L E, the very light flatfish. Yeah. And she, instead of, uh, she does put seojat, the yeah. fermented shrimp, in there, but she also. put slices of this kajami shiken there. Oh. And that's something that, you know, she grew up with in her hometown. Yes. And it was something that, you know, I grew up with in our household as well. And I so see. those kind of tastes get, uh, they, they get passed down within the family. I can't say that I know exactly what goes in these, this recipe, but I will say that, um, I hope it's not calling him out in any way, but my ex-boyfriend, mm-hmm. uh, his mom's kimchi, she's from Pohang. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. her kimchi was just, 
<gasps> it was the best kimchi I have ever had. And I would go over there and eat with them and have just, I'd just wait for her kimchi. Mm. Her kimchi jjigae, her like just kimchi side dishes, anything with her kimchi, I would get so excited. So I am very uh, kind of particular to the Gyeongsangdo sure. kind of style of kimchi there. But I'm not particularly sure what their difference is between Incheon as sure. well. So I'll have to ask right. her about that. Well, Pwong's got some great food though. Oh, they do. The, they the have crab. Oh, the yes. Oh. All the, all the seafood there. We'll have to get in like right. a regional talk about that someday oh, there. That's, that'll be a 12 part parter. Right. Mm. Oh my goodness. Well, even today we're looking at this here and we're like, oh, and once again. We've literally gone through three points. We've gone through here. three points, you guys. <laughs> we, we, we just have too much fun with you. But this last one here, well, not even the last, but I'd say this main last one here. What is that? Sure. We're talking about gochugaru. Oh, yes. The right. gochugaru, I'd say, is. I would almost consider it essential, but I'm curious to see how you would say you could substitute things. So if you really can't find Korean gochugaru, the thing is that I I find that in the kind of world spectrum of Mm. chili flakes, it's actually kind of right there in the middle. Really? It's a little sweet, a little spicy. It's not super sweet and it's not super spicy. It's not super fine. It's not super coarse. Yeah, I would agree with that because I have had some blow your face off spicy foods Mm -hmm. in my life. And I would say that Gochugaru is not like that at all. Or though, though they kind of have a, um, yeah, like a little s- sweet aftertaste mm-hmm. that follows it, and and that's. I think what makes a lot of these dishes so special right. is because they don't always pack this heat that makes you sweat. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got this just refined taste sure. to it. I and mean, in Korea, you have so many different types yeah. of gochugaru, but in terms of just like a middle of the road yeah. one, the the kind of the most average gochugaru that we use in Korea is. very kind of right in the center of the whole world's average. Mm -hmm. So if where you live, if you have uh, red chili flakes that Mm -hmm. are available to you that don't have the seeds in them, they're not like powder fine, but at the same time, they're not super coarse either, not too spicy, but not not too mild either. Then that might be a reasonable substitution instead of the like the standard Korean right. gochugaru. Okay, Now, yeah. If you can find the real stuff, use that for sure. For sure. However, can't go can't go wrong with the 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 original there. Mm-hmm. Now Maria Go says I haven't done it. She's talking about kimjang, uh, but she's often seen it in dramas. I'm pretty sure many people are referring to the kimchi slap. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows kimchi slap. I, I feel like that is the most famous thing to do with kimchi in the dramas here. Now, Rumi Neem says, there is white kimchi, right? Pek mm. kimchi otton I would say pek kimchi n how would I describe that? It, it, it's, it's not spicy. No. Um, It's refreshing. Yeah. Right. It's very like, um, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it's got that slight sweetness to it, like from that pickling. Sure. And it, it's got that very soury, acidic kind of refreshing taste to it. It's very delicious. Right. And instead of, uh, what is it, putting gochugaru, instead of putting the dried red pepper flakes, oftentimes it's garnished with sliced, like honggochu. Yes, those, right? the those red, pepper, red peppers. Fresh red peppers. Oh. And you get that, again, it's, it's got that like fresh vegetable taste to it, right? Exactly. It's very crisp. Think about what you want to eat on. a hot summer's day that's what pet kimchi tastes exactly. like exactly mm-hmm. and then we have a message here about kim jan from samsam e sanim yejeon e harmony jip gaso kim jang he bannende sogumuro baekju jeoreuneun geot buto yangnyeom kaji da jikjeop heso neomu himdeorosseyo da geunnago suyugirang mogeul te eo neomu hengbokhesseoso geureudo jeon jueokuro nama isseumnida oh that's so good so they're yeah. saying they did kim jang at their grandparents parents' house and all, they did everything from the salting, 소금부터, and all the way to the 양념, mm-hmm. the um, sweet The seasoning. Seasoning. The seasoning kind of, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I had a moment here where my brain was like, how do I? The sweetening. <laughs> the sweetening. And the, the spicening. The spi- <laughs> and the, the saltening. <laughs> my English. So goodening. Oh my gosh, you guys. Don't learn English from me, apparently. <laughs> uh, Divide Divide says, my older sister likes kimchi so much when it's already tastes sour, but I prefer my kimchi fresh, so we don't get along when we're eating kimchi. Do you and your wife have this? Different tastes in, in terms of kimchi? We, I think we're pretty compatible. Mm-hmm. However, However, this is not an uncommon problem, mm-hmm. which is why they make kimchi, the Korean uh, was a kimchi refrigerators, with different climate zones. Mm-hmm, so you, right. Yeah, right. So you can have your sister's side, you know, a little bit warmer so it ferments faster. Yeah. Yours can be cold so it stops the fermentation and keeps it fresh. And everyone is happy. Uh, I, see, this is what it, it, I mean. Everyone just kind of figures out how to get along here. Mm-hmm. It's take, we, we've got technology for everything. Every problem, we got it covered here. Mm-hmm. Now, Pujani says, 
says pagimchi for jajangmyeon. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 100% there. That that always has to go. Lunatic Neo says, oh my God, Kayla has an ex. Ah. I'm going to sip my coffee here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but now we also have a lot more things that we would want to cover Uh, But we just always end up running out of time here. So I feel like if we have the time next week, we'll talk about some things that you might not realize Mm -hmm. that you have in your country that you can use, whether it's a substitution or just some simple thing you didn't realize that was all that it was needed. Well, I'll tell you this before we end. Sangapsar, pork belly, available everywhere. Oh, yeah. You can find that just about anywhere. You can cook it at home. And may, you know what? Maybe we'll tell them how to do that next week. <gasps> that would be such a great yeah. idea. Because I feel like we we always talk about these foods and, and different tastes. And everyone gets so hungry and they want to eat right after the program. Mm-hmm. I feel like we should give you guys one of Chef Matt's like secret recipes on how to make something at home. Tell you what. Everyone's got a homework assignment. Before next week's episode, you're going to buy yourself a couple of kilograms of pork belly. <laughs> Get some uh, tamgyeom, some samjang, and we'll do a follow along. Oh, that sounds like a great idea, everyone! You've heard it here. You got homework for next mm-hmm. week, so make sure you get that samgyeopsal, the pork belly. We've got the samjang and some tamgyeom, that uh, sesame oil, and we're gonna do a cooking challenge here, like a uh, we would say a tojon, right? Mm-hmm. A challenge there. So everyone, make sure you tune in next week as well. And Matt, thank you so much for tuning in and coming in today to hang out with me. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to see you as well. And everyone, that unfortunately is all the time that we. We have today for food talk. Thank you so much for tuning in. 네, 오늘 한국어 천재는 여기까지입니다.